Hello everyone. For those of you who don't know or remember me, yes, I am the guy that did the DZ engineering videos a few years back. A few of you wanted me to complete my little project that I did as a grad assistant, and I decided I might as well go ahead and give it another go now that I have some time. But this time I like to start from the digital end of engineering, and then we will work our way towards basic circuits. So the first video that we have is for an introductory digital design course, and this is number conversions. For this one, we are going to learn different base number systems, such as decimal, binary, octal, hexadecimal, and any other bases of X. We're going to learn to convert from one base number to another using both whole numbers and decimals. And I'm going to teach a little trick about base numbers and powers of N, and we will get to that towards the end of this video. Now, many of you know how to count, most of us about the time we knew how to walk. Learning to count to the number of the day, a number less than 20, was, back when I was a baby, one of Sesame Street's most basic videos. Later on in life, we learn about digits and that each number is made up of a number of these digits. In our everyday counting system, we have 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is known as the decimal system. The prefix dec is Latin for the number 10. However, in most computers and electronics in general, they speak in only whether or not a particular part in their system is on or off, and that requires two numbers, 0 and 1. These two numbers can stand for on or off, high and low, up and down, and so on. This numbering system is known as the binary system, the prefix by, Latin for the number 2. Other popular numbering systems in engineering include the octal numbering system, which contains eight digits, thus the Latin prefix oct, meaning eight, and hexadecimal, which contains 16 digits. Now you notice that after the number nine, we start using letters, like in the case of the hexadecimal numbering system. Notice that letters are used beyond a base 10 or decimal system. So how do we place these numbers and how do we convert them? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so we'll start simple with something many of us know from the 4th or 5th grade math with place values. Let's take this number 218. We know that the number 2 is placed in the hundreds position, and thus we multiply it by 100. We then take the 1 and we'll multiply it by 10, and then we take the 8 and we multiply it by 1. What you probably don't know, or you probably have an idea of, by now is where we actually get the numbers 110 and 1 for our places. Well, if you have figured it out, what the numbers 110 and 1 have in common are that they are powers of 10, 100 being 10 to the second, 10 being 10 to the first, and 1 being 10 to the zero. The numbering system's base determines the worth of the digit in the place value. Consider this something like advanced place value theory. Something like that. So how it works in binary is pretty much the same thing. Let's take this six-digit binary number here. It's not as confusing as it looks. If you want to convert this binary number to decimal, all you have to do is first set up the digits. So we have six digits, and thus we need it up to the six minus one power, or five, like so. After that, we will then place each of the digits with their corresponding areas. We have a 1 at the 2 to the 5th power, a 1 at 2 to the 2nd power, and a 1 at 2 to the 0 power. And then we have a 0 at the other three areas. Then we will add them up. 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 2nd is 4, and 2 to the 0 is 1. We will add up 32 plus 4 plus 1, and we get 37. If you are still confused, I'll pause here for about 10 seconds and show you the next slide, which lays out the place value of this binary number for you. So now you're probably wondering how it works for numbers that are not whole numbers. Well, it pretty much works the same way. Let's add a 0.6 to our first problem and make this 
We know from basic math that the sixth digit is being multiplied by 0.1, and yep, 0.1 just happens to be 10 to the power of negative 1. With binary numbers, it works the same way. Let's add a 0.11 to our second problem here. In this case, we just have to add two more places, a 2 to the negative 1, which is a half, and a 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 quarter. We then follow the same rules that we did in our previous problem, and we add up our terms. 2 to the 5th is 32. 2 to the 2nd is 4. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the negative 1 is a half. And 2 to the negative 2 is a quarter. We then add them up, and we come up with 37.75. The binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal systems are the four most popular numbering systems but there are an infinite number that can be used. These four are just used very often in computers and are vital to understanding digital design and engineering, especially the binary system. Now before we end this video, let me show you a little trick that you can use to make your life a little easier in binary conversions. First, I'd like to ask a simple question. What is two to the fourth power? Well, obviously it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. Now here's the next question. What numbering system uses 16 digits? Yep, the hexadecimal system. We also know that binary has two digits, and we know that all positive numbers less than 2 only require one digit to count in this system. All positive numbers less than 4 require two digits, and all positive numbers less than 8 require three digits. Starting to see a pattern here? Yep, all positive numbers less than 16 require four digits. So you can count from zero to 15, not just with the hexadecimal system, but by grouping four digits together with the binary numbering system. So again, you can group four binary digits together to form one hexadecimal digit. And if you haven't noticed already, you can also group three binary digits together to form one octal digit. Thus, 2 to the 4th equals 16, and 2 to the 3rd is 8. You can also go by their logarithmic forms, if you know logarithms well. Why don't you try it yourself? Try using the base 4 system that only uses the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3, and form a numbering conversion system to the hexadecimal system. I'll give you a hint. What is 4 to the 2nd power? Fractions can be grouped accordingly as well. Let's take, for example, 0 0.1101 in the binary system and convert it to the hexadecimal system. I am going to cheat a little bit here and use our little table from before, and we are going to take 1101 and its corresponding hexadecimal digit here, which is D. And we are left with 0 0.D to the 16. If you do not have four digits in your fraction, no problem. All you have to do is just pad a number of zeros until you have the proper number of digits needed to convert. Let's take this example here, 0 0.11. We are going to pad this up with two zeros since we need to convert this to the hexadecimal. Then we are going to look it up at our table. We know that 1100, according to this table, is C. And that leaves us with 0 0.C, base 16. All right, so that's it for this video. Coming up next, we are going to have our negative numbers in binary. We will look at negative digits, 1's complement and 2's complement, and we will also look at different coding in binary, such as binary coding decimals, exceed 3, and the gray code. Also, later on, in a couple videos down the road, I'm going to start to do binary algebra and binary arithmetic. So if you liked this video, please thumbs up, rate, comment, and subscribe to my videos. Thank you for watching.